Hello, this is Mr. Priscilla. Today we're discussing some uh, the basics of probability theory. Hopefully you've had a chance to read in your book and to watch the uh, signed video that goes with this. And I'm going to be working some examples today. Problem number one, write the event as a set of outcomes. Uh, if the event is large, you may describe the event without writing it out. So, a family has two children, and there are more girls than boys. So which of these, they're looking at how they're using G for girls and B for boys. Which of these would have more girls than boys? Surely not this one. This is all the possible outcomes. D, you could have two boys. Or the first one a boy, second one a girl. Or the first child a girl, second one a boy. Or just both of them girls. Well, how could they have more girls than boys? Would be if they just had two girls. <clears throat> now, problem number two. Write the event blue does not appear when you spin the given spinner three times. You're going to write R for red, B for blue, Y for yellow. If you wanted to see, imagine all the possibilities. You could start off with something like uh, blue, blue, blue. Then maybe two blues and a red and so forth. So which of these mean, which of these of the following set, which represent the event. Blue does not appear when we spin the given spinner three times. Well, blue doesn't appear. Well, if you look at these answer choices for A, B, and C, blue is appearing in these. What about D? Three yellows, two yellows, then a red. Is D the only one where no blues appear? There's the outcomes. D. Now here's another one. Same setup. The spinner. Which set represents the event? Yellow appears at least twice when we spin the spinner three times. Yellow appears at least twice would be two or three yellows. Which one is two or three yellows? Hmm. Well, it's certainly not B, and it's certainly not C. So let's look at this. It's either A or D, but you see, a includes the three yellows. B doesn't have the yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay? D only has just two yellows. It doesn't have the three yellows. And since it says at least yellow appears at least twice, the answer is going to be A. Because that has all of the times yellow appears twice, plus the one time yellow would appear three times. Now, number four. We're flipping a coin three times. No, we're flipping three coins. Outcomes in the sample space are represented by strings of H's and T's. The sample space is the list of all possible outcomes. How many elements are in the sample space? Well, to calculate that, okay, there's going to be three different coins. You just ask yourself, how many possible outcomes are there for each of them? For each of the coin, there's two possible outcomes, either heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails. All together, that means that there are eight possible outcomes. Uh, 
on B, express the event there are more heads than tails. More heads than tails. That would mean that you have either two or three heads. Which one has it? Two or three heads. It's not, certainly not C. You see tail, tail. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens here on D. Wait, no. Yeah, right here. There's two tails, one head. That's not more heads than tails. It's either A or B. It's similar to what happened up there on the other one. Which one of these allows for two or three heads? Well, it's going to be A because here are the two heads showing plus here's the three heads. Down here on B, it's only showing just two heads. Now, the probability that there are more heads than tails. The way we calculate probability is we're going to write, okay, how many ways could you get more heads than tails? Well, there are four ways out of how many possibilities are there all together. Well, that's eight. So four eighths or one half. So the probability of getting more heads than tails is one half. And D asks a tricky question. What's the probability that there's an equal number of heads or tails? Well, if you actually started writing everything out, three heads, head, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, heads, heads. Those are the ones where there's more heads than tails. Or you could have... Uh, Tail, tail, head, tail, heads, tail, head, tail, 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 tail. Because there's three of just three outcomes, it wouldn't be possible to have the same number of heads or tails. If we were doing it four times, then yes, you could have two heads, two tails. But because there's only three, there's no way you're going to get an equal number of heads and tails. So zero there. How are we doing on time? Okay. Uh, it's about time for me to uh, call it quits right now. We're out of time. We'll pick up with more of this pro uh, probability theory. If you haven't had a chance to read the book, now's a good uh, chance. Look through the book and uh, watch the video. Okay? And we'll continue discussing this pick up with number five the next time. Okay, thank you for watching and listening. Bye-bye.